Hello, hello, hello. You're in for a cozy one today. So I hope you've got a big mug of tea. I've got my Come From Away mug, which is the musical that you really should be booking tickets for freaking now. I've been buying a lot of books and um, I'm, I'm not sorry about it. <laughs> but what I am is um, excited to show you them. I love books. If you haven't been here before, my name's Lena and I am a book addict, but that's fine. I'm single-handedly happy <laughs> to prop up the UK book industry. It's an industry I believe in. It's all gonna be fine. <laughs> I would love to know in the comments below what you've been buying recently as well, because a problem shared is a problem halved. And I wouldn't call mine a book problem, but I would call it a book enthusiasm, a, a deep book enthusiasm. However, the first book that I wanted to show you, I actually don't have an enthusiasm for at all. In, in fact, <laughs> I wish I didn't have to buy it. This is The Uninhabitable Earth by David Wallace Wells. And I've got a history with this book. It's a, it's a, it's a tragic history. I started reading it about four years ago and it scared me so much that I just stopped reading it. I read about 25%, I think, maybe. I was just like, wow, that is, that's enough for me. <laughs> the worst part was I started it in an airport, which I don't, I don't recommend. However, it was a really well written book. It's just that the content scared me. It is about the climate crisis in a very literary, like supposed to be very beautifully written kind of way, but it is very, very hard hitting and very like, look, these are the facts. <laughs> He's not going to sugar sugarcoat it for you. It is starting that book is one of the things that inspired me to start talking about the climate crisis on my channel, which has been going on for about four years now. I started my positive panic series, which I don't know if you've noticed. <laughs> has kind of permeated into literally all of my content. <laughs> so I have a lot to thank David for, old Dave, but I, I have still been really procrastinating from reading this book. However, I have just started recording season two of my podcast, which is No Books and a Dead Planet. If you're a fan of it on the YouTube channel, it's now gonna be an audio only, and it's also now available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, anywhere you get podcasts, it is available. Uh, you can listen to season one right now. Season two is coming out soon. And one of my guests, because I get my guests to pick what they read. One of my guests picked this. <laughs> I, I don't regret it and I don't hate him, but I am just, I'm just sweating, you know? So I thought I'd get the hardback edition. I got this second hand off the internet for like three pounds or something, because I'll be able to like highlight stuff. And I some, sometimes feel when it's there's hard information to absorb, it's better if I have like a physical copy in front of me that it just feels comforting. I bought the hard <laughs> copy, that's all there is to it. Me and Dave are gonna have a little, a little chat and uh, we'll see how I am after that, shall we? Maybe I'll read it for Halloween. Maybe that's, maybe that's the appropriate thing. Anyway, next book is a bit more of a pacey thriller that I'm really, really excited for. This is a proof of Chain Gang All Stars and this has had so much hype. This is, I've seen huge bookshops filled, like the windows just filled with the books of this. I was actually given this by a friend who is working on the marketing campaign for it and it's a kind of dystopian book set in the prison system in the US. Welcome to Chain Gang All Stars, the popular and highly controversial program inside America's prison system. In packed arenas watched by millions of live stream viewers, prisoners compete as gladiators for the first prize, their freedom. Fan favorite Lorette and Hamara are teammates and lovers. <gasps> this was published in July and I can't wait to get into it. It's supposed to be a proper page turner. Tommy Orange says it's good and Tommy Orange is an incredible writer. So who am, who am I to say otherwise? The next book is a bit of a silly geeky book I picked up at Haywards Hill Bookshop in London, which is a really, really cute bookshop. If you're ever around, you should go, it's beautiful. But I just picked up this really geeky book called Blurb Your Enthusiasm. And um, if you don't know, I'm really into books about books. I have a whole video about it up here, but I, I had to add this to the collection and it's gonna be a silly read, but from blurbs to titles, quirks to cute animal designs, author feuds, bonk busters, <laughs> plot spoilers, and publishing secrets. Discover why it's good to judge a book by its cover. It's got a literary history of the blurb in it. It's got loads of essays about the history of book covers. Some might find it a snooze fest, but I am 1000% in. The next book I picked up when I was doing an event in Birmingham as a really small little bookshop called Bookshop on the Green in Bourneville, which is the part of Birmingham where the Cadbury's factory is. And yes, 
The Air Does Smell of Chocolate. I picked up this book. <laughs> I was, I did a poetry reading there and it was really lovely. They sold it out, it was such a nice event and I couldn't, it would be rude of me not to leave, to leave the bookshop without the book. And this one was signed, so obviously I had to get it. This is Why Women Grow, Stories of Soil, Sisterhood and Survival. And I, I did not even have time to read the blurb. Those, one, two, three, four, five, six, those six words sold me. So whoever wrote this blurb doesn't need this book about blurbs. She did it in one. Women have always gardened, but their stories have been buried with our work. Alice Vincent is on a quest to change that. It's a much needed exploration of why women turn to the earth. Sign me up. <laughs> it's also bloody beautiful. End papers. I think I will. Much anticipated, Ben Ockery is an incredible poet and he's just released his poetry correction, collection get it right Lena all about the climate crisis so obviously I had to pick it up and when I saw it in person as well I was really like oh I have to buy it I didn't realize that it would be this really small satisfying beautiful textured hardback but I bought this when I was visiting my friend Sana and we went to Books on the Hill which is again a really incredible independent bookshop that you should totally go to it is bang smack gorgeous and they also have like a coffee shop upstairs in the attic and it's so quiet and full of cushions and books and it's beautiful. I think this has a few little essays in here as well but I haven't honestly read a lot of the back because I don't care. I just know that Ben Ockery is an incredible writer and that's and it's, it's subject matter that's close to my heart as well and obviously I want to read as many books around the climate crisis for my podcast No Books on a Dead Planet that you should totally listen to so it's an easy sell. Next I've rectified an ill. <laughs> if you watch this channel regularly you'll be bored of me banging on about how I love this book but I hate, hate this cover. I think it's really prevented a lot of people from finding what is essentially the book of the year. So I bought the US edition of Pod by Lilane Paul and it's so beautiful. I am excited to give away my paperback copy of the British version and I am so excited to reread this in a dress that matches the inside, in a cloak of glory. I think that's it. I got it second hand. I think it was about £10 and it was worth every single penny for my peace of mind. So anyone who's been following that saga, Rest assured, Lena is now at peace. She has the correct edition. Everything is fine. Next, I have this book that I actually got because I was doing a presenting job, doing a showcase of loads of different independent publishers. And Anya was one of the authors that was in that showcase. So I received her book and I uh, read parts of it and I like kind of researched around it. After the showcase, I was like, there was so many, I think we, I think we interviewed like eight or nine authors that night. She was one of the ones I came away and was like, I freaking love to read her book. She just seemed like, I was just like, yes. So I wanted to read the whole thing start to finish and I'm so glad I did. This is called Someday Maybe and it is about, do you know what, just read the blurb. Just, you've got a minute, haven't you? You know, yeah, I'm anywhere to be. Okay, brief trigger warning here, by the way. Here are three things you should know about my husband. One, he was the great love of my life despite his penchant for going in commando. Incommunicado. <laughs> Number two, he was, as far as I and everyone else could tell, perfectly happy. Number three, on New Year's Eve, he killed himself. And there's one thing you should know about me. One, I found him. Bonus fact, no, I'm not okay. This is a, is, this is the paciest book I've ever read about grief. It has loads of plot points in it, loads of things happen. It wasn't one of those still gentle grief books of which there are many and of, you know, the ones I've read, very, very good. But this is something different. And I really felt like every character in it was completely fleshed out and real. It had a really interesting take on class and race and love and gratitude and the complicated feelings of despair even when you are held by a community and um i just thought it was really unusual really special really really well written and i'm so glad i read it that's literally it just to have sometimes books are just good <laughs> i've got nothing else to add i was literally just like yep <laughs> next we've got two sewing books one that i got secondhand while i was buying pod because i was on world of books anyway and i was like in for a penny in front of the book. This is called Radical Sewing, Pattern-Free Sustainable Fashion for All Bodies. I have been using the DIY Daisy book to teach myself to sew. 
video about that up here if you're interested. And I, I always want to learn more about it. And, and that is a kind of zero waste book because most of the stuff is made out of squares, but this is more of an in-depth manual. So it's mainly text. I think there are patterns at the back. Yes, there are. They're more like explained to you rather than you trace them and stuff. It's not, it's, it's, it seems a bit more advanced. <laughs> so I'm excited to read it. It's still for beginners. And it also goes through like all the different kinds of sustainable materials and sustainable techniques. It just looked good to me. I actually thought it was an old book, but it only came out a couple of years ago. And again, it's a very small publishing house that published it. So I think that's a really cute little guide and I'm hoping to read it, love it, and then be able to recommend it when people ask me what book should I get if I want to start sewing. And then also I've been listening to the Check Your Thread podcast. I also became a patron, so I got a shout out on the podcast, which always gives me the thrills. But it's a sustainable sewing and fashion podcast. On one of the recent episodes, they interviewed Brigitta, who is the author of this book, Zero Waste Patterns. And she was just so passionate, so knowledgeable. The book sounded just completely up my street. I was, I think if I'd have seen it in the shop, I would be a bit intimidated and think like, oh, am I at this level yet? But actually hearing her speak and looking more carefully at the patterns, I was like, I do understand this. I think I could, I think I could do this. So this is like a real beginner's zero waste. So it's not beginner's sewing, but it's beginner's zero waste sewing. So it takes you through building some blocks that you can tailor to be perfectly fit for you. And then from those blocks, so like a, a tank top, a skirt, a pair of trousers, you can completely customize them and make like an infinite different amount of outfits. So I love that concept. It's such a beautifully produced book, like really, really nice. And it also has like actual photos for each stage of the process, which is all I need. <laughs> I'm really, really excited about that. And I think that this Brigitte person seems absolutely wonderful. I follow her on Instagram and she seems great. So very happy to support that and get into my 20 projects to sew my own wardrobe. And then finally, I was sent this book as a PR copy. This is Kate Moss's The Ghost Ship. Now Kate Moss founded the Women's Prize, which is a thing that I'm kind of obsessed with now, apparently. <laughs> judging by all the videos on my channel. But she's also an incredible author and she's like a bestseller and I have never read a Kate Moss book and that should be illegal. So when I heard that she was releasing this book, which is about, how do I describe it? It's kind of about pirates in the 16th century, but it also involves some gender fluidity and lots of kissing. <laughs> so I was like, Old. I've actually read this book and I really, really enjoyed it. I thought it was really immersive, really mysterious, very twisty, turny, lots of stuff about justice in there and family history and like what it means to be outside the gender binary like 400 years ago, which is something that I've never read about. I think she did a great job. And also if you're going to visit Amsterdam in the near future, this would be a great book to read in Amsterdam because quite a lot of the parts of it are set in it. Or if, you've, if you're going to sea, potentially with pirates, <laughs> then you should also read it. That's my, that's my holiday read for all those of you who are thinking of joining a Jolly Roger. There are all the books that I have got recently. Is it too many? Some would say yes. But um, I, I do kind of read more than one book a week, sometimes two books a week. So I feel like in that respect, this is only about five weeks worth of material for me. So I think, I think that's okay. <laughs> Thank you so much to the Gumption Club who tipped me per video to make sure these videos keep happening. And so I don't have to have a sponsor at the end telling you to sign up to some website domain or something or neck suspicious vitamins or rub weird creams on your face. You can just go. You can just, you're allowed to just go and read some books now. <laughs> if you like book videos, whoa, maybe you'll like some of these. If you want to watch me talk about something else completely different, you can do that up here. Thank you so much for watching. Frogsmog out.